used to be your mayor, right? He's highly invested in solar. So what do these big wigs do? These very wealthy guys, they know how to play the game. What they do is they give millions of dollars to groups like Greenpeace, and then Greenpeace applies that. It comes with strings attached. Greenpeace, I'll give you all this money if you promise that you will use the lion's share of it for your anti-carbon dioxide campaign. Will you do that, please? Okay, thank you very much. So now Greenpeace, Rainforest Action Network, you go right on down the line, the Sierra Club, they become the... They become the spokespersons for these very wealthy guys who know that if they can get a PR campaign for people to go green, they'll make loads of money. That's what's happening. That's 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 what's happening. Uh, Interesting. Uh, This came out just a, a bit ago. Donald Trump has said no more Fox News. He won't go on Fox News. He doesn't think he's being treated fairly. No more Fox News. It's just amazing. This guy, I've never seen anything like this. Having been in media as long as I have, both radio side and TV side, and including, by the way, I'll just tell you, there was a time in my career early on when I graduated from the University of Missouri, and uh, I was a news director. So I was, you know, I ran a television newsroom. I was like 22 years old, the youngest guy managing a TV newsroom, at least within the ABC family. So I I know how the game is played. I know how it all works. I've never seen anything like this. Generally speaking, if a show, a network show in particular, or even a local show for that matter, if they want you as a guest and you say, nah, I can give you a phone call, but I don't have time to come in, they're going to say, no, forget it. We don't want it. Can you... Can you believe how Trump has been able to do this? He's so popular and so in demand that he rarely even goes in front of the cameras, except last night when he was on a late night with Colbert, which is in New York City. <laughs> and, and by the way, he knocked it out of the park on that program, I will just tell you. But Trump is so huge that he can actually phone in for interviews, even on the major Sunday shows. Nobody can get away with that except Donald Trump. His brand is huge. And even when he's calling in, he still owns the medium. The medium is the message. He wins every time. But now he says, screw it, I don't need your Fox News. I'm not even going to call in anymore because he believes he's being treated unfairly. Ben Carson was on Fox News today, and he was slamming the PC culture after his remarks regarding the fact that he would not support a Muslim president. Here he is. This is clip 16, guys. If you'd play it, please. I said I would support anyone. If Again, it seems to be hard for people to actually hear English and understand it. I said I would support anyone, regardless of their background, if, in fact, they embrace American values and our Constitution, and are willing to place that above their beliefs. That's Ben Carson. Now, I don't know if anybody actually heard what he was saying, but I buy it. I knew what he was saying from the get-go. And by the way, as much as I appreciate Carly Fiorina on a lot of levels, uh, she was flat-out wrong when she criticized Ben Carson. When she decided to go constitutions, she said, quote, in our, it says in our Constitution that religion cannot be a test for office. I understand what the Constitution says regarding the test of religion and appointments, etc. But guess what, Carly? I'm a voter. I can use whatever test I would like when voting for someone for office. I can use their hair color. I can use uh, their looks. I can use their religion. I can use their net worth. I can use whatever I would like, their business experience. It doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want as a voter, and that's what we're talking about here. And, Carly, I will disagree with you on this when you say, I actually believe that people of any faith make better leaders. Well, come on now. Let's define the faith. Because when I look around the world today, I'm seeing a lot of hell breaking loose from people who tell us with no uh, no uncertainty they're members of the religion of peace. And I gave you the statistics early in the broadcast, and I can review them for you once again. Just last week, we had 289 jihad attacks worldwide. 
Just last week, we had 289, excuse me, 28 jihad attacks last week. 289 people died from those attacks. 583 people were injured. Now, if you were to look any of those people in the eye and tell them they're not of a particular faith, guess what? They'll lop your head off. Okay, what about the Wiccan faith? You you think that's a faith that uh, is good for us, Carly? I'm just asking the question. (laughs) Come on now. Can we have a talk? Yes, we can. Let's go to Chris calling from Kansas, K-I-N-A. You are on the Savage Nation. Thanks for checking in. Brian Sussman filling in. Good afternoon, Brian. The reason I'm calling today is I actually heard the audio on your program from that woman in North Jersey, and I can't believe what I'm, I'm hearing because I am originally from South Jersey, as is my wife. We moved here four years ago. But point in case, it is ridiculous. Why are they going to go and ask for a religious holiday when schools pretty much separated that ever since the 50s, it's been slowly phased out, and make a big statement like this. It's like they're drawing battle lines. Okay? Yeah. How many years now has this slowly creeped in? And we don't have our commander-in-chief to thank. I mean, for Pete's sake, she let a bar will come into the country. What the heck's a, a few hundred thousand Muslims going to do? They're just Chris, playing, playing there game. is... There is a line being drawn in the sand, and, and here's what we have to remember. You know, we're, we're from a Western mindset. You and I live in the United States of America. We're geared to think quarterly, right? I mean, look at corporate earnings. If you work for a business, you're thinking corporate. I mean, you're thinking uh, quarters. You're thinking fiscal year. We're, we're very short-term in terms of our thinking. However, that part of the world thinks long-term. They're not thinking the next quarter. They're not even thinking the next year they're thinking the next quarter century they're thinking the next 250 years and this is how this dangerous ideology has been able to slowly spread it's through incredible patience the likes of which it's very difficult for us to wrap our minds around you understand what i'm saying chris oh no doubt about it indeed and the fact of the matter remains is if it's such a religion of peace why is it in the quran that is pretty much their daily instructions for life I mean, complete from how you worship to how you see people, and if they do something that's wrong, you and if your own son or daughter does something wrong, you can kill them. It, and Christian can I just tell you that that happens in the United States? These honor killings, uh, these honor killings, and the stories are buried. <laughs> don't want to talk about. It, don't talk. It's like the three guys up in Maine. I talked about this earlier on the Savage Nation, uh, but the three Somalis in Maine who absolutely butchered. This poor Christian guy in Portland, Maine, earlier this month. Okay, like, where, where was that story? I didn't see it at USA Today. I didn't see it at NBC, M, uh, ABC, CBS, CNN, BS, Fox, BS. I didn't see it anywhere. No, and the mainstream media won't cover it because they're too worried about the Pope and His Holiness visiting them. Well, that certainly is an interesting story, but there are so many others that are critical to the critical to our our future and our our security as a nation and i thank you for your call in fact let's go to oh boy let's see that color dropped that's okay we can continue uh the bottom line is folks we have been placed in a situation by this man of the white house who told us he was going to fundamentally transform this nation and guess what he is and I personally fear that he is only beginning to show signs of his drunkenness. He is going to be drunk with power. And what do you think? On the way out the door, he's going to clear out Gitmo. I mean, he gets rid of Osama bin Laden's bodyguard, sends him to Saudi Arabia for rehab. He's going to clear out Gitmo, and on the way out the door, it's going to be Mumia Abu-Jamal and uh, Leonard Peltier. You just wait and see. Okay, we've got time for a few more calls in the next segment. Brian Sussman filling in. It's always a pleasure. It's an honor on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Ladies Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. So we bent over backward to make sure this kid doesn't feel, as Michael would say, offended. 
right? The 14-year-old, Ahmed Mohammed, the bomb kid. Oh, I'm sorry, the clock kid. I, I've done so much research on this story, and I say this because he spent the entire day here in the San Francisco Bay Area where I'm speaking to you from yesterday. He's at Google. He gets a tour of the city. He goes to In-N-Out Burgers. And uh, Google was having its big uh, contest for young inventors. This kid didn't invent anything. He took the casing off an electronic clock, stuck the skeleton, the uh, the inside of the electronic clock into what they called a pencil case, but really looks like a briefcase. And I would hope that any kid bringing something like that into a school would be taken into custody immediately and question, what is this? We really want to know. Get the bomb squad in here fast. Call in the SWAT team if we need to. Because that thing looks scary. And by the way, he brought it to class. It was no science day. This kid didn't invent anything. He didn't build anything other than something that looked like a bomb. I believe he was put up to it by his, his activist father. And yet he's invited to Google. Oh, he's just a great young man. This is the kind of person we want working for us. We're so politically correct. Daniel's calling from WVNN in Alabama. Daniel, you're on the Savage Nation. Quickly, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I just want to mention that uh, you mentioned um, Trump and his, his, his statement. I just feel like, uh, you know, you guys just, we're really looking at him as Daniel WVNN, and I'm sure we cut that off in time. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, hate to head, hate hate to end it on a, a rough note like that, but occasionally these things happen. I will tell you, my friends, what you need to do is go to michaelsavage.com, home of the Savage Nation, borders, language, culture. Government Zero is the book that you can pre-order right away. Because, as Michael is going to warn us, no borders, no language, no culture, that's the death of this nation. Now listen, as a people, we want to be hospitable, of course. As a people, we want to be generous, and we are. We're the most generous, hospitable nation on the earth. If it weren't the case, why are millions of people trying to get in here legally and illegally? I'm just asking you the question. But unless you maintain borders and language and culture, you will have no country. And then we'll be placed in the hands of a despot, a dictator, a strongman who will take all of those values we hold so dear and all of our rights given to us by God and trample them asunder. We must remain vigilant. We must hang together. It's always a pleasure to be behind this microphone for Michael Savage on this The Savage Nation. We'll do it again next time.